Since the beginning of this series, we've talked about oscillators, audio synthesis, filters, envelopes and LFOs. And as much as I can't wait to talk about all the audio effects, I still need to talk about one thing to wrap up this control section. And that is MIDI controllers, sequencers and arpeggiators. We saw how to shape the notes of a synth with oscillators and envelopes, so now let's see how this synth actually plays those notes. We'll see principles that are very useful in a modular setup, like VCB rack, but understanding them will be also very useful in other contexts. To know what notes to play and how to play them, your synth needs four types of signal. A gate that is either high or low. Basically, it tells the synth when a key is pressed. When the key is held down, the gate is high, and when the key is released, the gate goes down. It is this info the envelope will use to know where to trigger its attack and release phases. When the gate goes up, it enters its attack phase, followed by the decay, followed by the sustain, and whenever the gate goes down, the envelope enters its release phase. Then there is the trigger. It's a very short impulse that is sent every time a key is pressed. If you play several notes one after the other, the notes might overlap, so the gate will stay open, as there will always be at least one key that is pressed at all time. But the trigger will send an impulse for every new key pressed, so the envelope can reset for every note played. You will see a lot of synth with an option called legato. When legato is active, the trigger will be ignored, so the attack and decay phases will be played only for the first note, and one envelope cycle can cover a whole musical phrase. Then there is the pitch, because of course the synth will need to know what note to play. In an analog setting, the most common format is 1V per octave, meaning the higher the voltage applied, the higher the pitch of the note. A difference of 1V between two notes will result in a difference of one octave between them. And then there is the velocity. It is the strength with which each note is played. It is generally linked to the amplitude of the note, meaning that the harder you press a key, the louder it is, but it can be linked to any other parameter as well. Having these trims in four separated cables can be very useful in a modular setting. So you could use the velocity to control the intensity of a distortion, for example, to have more distorted notes when you play harder. Or if you have something generating triggers randomly, you could plug it into an envelope generator, so it would act like if a key was pressed every time it receives a trigger, which is cool to make self-generating patches. You can also use the pitch to control the cutoff of a filter, to open the filter more on higher notes. This is actually called key follow, and it can help you to have a more consistent tone throughout several octaves. Because if the filter is fixed, low notes can have a lot of harmonics above the fundamental before reaching the filter's cutoff, and higher notes could simply disappear above this filter. Whereas if the cutoff moves with the note, you could have the same number of harmonics above the fundamental every time, resulting in a more consistent sound. But in the digital world, the most used format to control a synthesizer is MIDI, which gathers all this info in one cable. If you use a MIDI controller to control your DAW, that's why you only have to plug in its USB lead, which can also give power to your controller, and that's very handy. These MIDI controllers can come in many shapes, like keyboards or pads, but the principles stay the same. Each one will send this gate, pitch and velocity data to control your synth. And when you are drawing notes in the piano roll of your door, you are essentially doing the same thing that you would do by playing a MIDI keyboard, except you are programming it instead of playing it. The thing that is super handy with MIDI is that you can write automations. You can write or record the motion of any knob directly in your sequencer. And you can also assign any number of knobs to a macro knob, so when you move the macro knob, it will move all at the same time. And the two combined make a very powerful tool. For example, here in Serum, I have this macro knob linked to several things. So if I move this knob, it will move the cutoff of the filter, the amplitude of the oscillator, the position of the wavetable, and several other things, which is very handy to create complex moving sound design. In the same way, MIDI controllers often have several knobs, faders, and wheels that you can set to control different parts of your synth. Now, to control the notes your synth plays, you don't necessarily need a keyboard, pads, or even to program the notes individually. You can also use other modules, like a step sequencer or an arpeggiator. A step sequencer is a module that will send regular impulses to your synth, so you can create a sequence of notes that will be played in loop by your synth. For example, in VCV Rack, you have the SEC3, which is an 8-step sequencer, meaning that you can make sequences of 8 notes with it. And you can program 3 different sequences with one module. They are represented by the 3 lines of knobs here. Each knob here represents the pitch of a note, and the clock knob sets the speed at which the sequence is read. 
So you can create your sequence on one of these rows and then you have the output for the pitch for each row there that you can connect to an oscillator and you have the output for the gate that you can connect to an envelope generator so it will be triggered every time a note is played. This sequencer doesn't have any output for the trigger because the gate will stay open only for half the time of each step so the gate won't be overlapping. In Ableton Live, my favorite step sequencer is probably the Max for Live device Mono Sequencer. Just throw it on the MIDI track and you'll have a 16 step sequencer for the pitch of the notes that you can lock to a certain scale or leave it free of any scale. And then you have different types on the left to sequence other things. You have a sequence for the velocity to have a different velocity for each note, the octaves if you want to play certain notes on different octaves, the length of the note, and the repeat sequence if you want to trigger several times the same note on a given step. What's very cool about this sequencer is that every sequence is independent and you can make loops of different lengths for each of them. So they would offset over time in a polyrhythmic fashion and that's perfect to create ever-evolving patterns. Basically, an arpeggiator will take a chord as an input and break it down into an arpeggio, playing one note at a time. Or you can also play just one note and the arpeggiator will repeat it at a certain rate. Let's take Ableton Live's arpeggiator as an example. You can see in the middle a rate knob that determines the speed of the arpeggio that can be synced to the tempo. And next to that is the gate knob, which determines how long the gate stays open for each note. So a smaller gate means shorter notes. On the top left corner is the heart of the arpeggiator. This is where you can tell the arpeggiator how you want it to play the chords you give to it. So there are several algorithms here to choose from. Up, which will play the note from the lowest to the highest. Down, which will play the note from the highest to the lowest. Converge will play the note on each extremity first, followed by the note in the middle, to create this kind of pattern. In addition to that, you also have a chord trigger, which will play the chord as is, but repeatedly, at a speed set by the rate knob. And you also have several algorithms to make random patterns. As you can see, there are a lot of algorithms here to choose from, but some arpeggiators also allow you to create your own sequence that will be transposed to every chord you play. These rate, gate and algorithm settings are the core of the arpeggiator, and you should find these parameters on every arpeggiator, with more or less options. For example, on this one you can make it sensitive to the velocity of the note you play, or you can transpose them to a particular scale. Or if you want to get creative with it, you can unsync the rate and control this knob with an envelope, or directly automate it to create an exponential rhythm. So you can use either a controller, a step sequencer or an arpeggiator to control your synth, and they all use gate, trigger, pitch and velocity information, which you can then use to control other parameters. For example, as said before, the velocity often controls the volume of the notes. But you could also link it to the amount of the filter envelope, so the envelope would open the filter more when you press the key harder. One way to do this in Serum would be by using the Matrix tab. There you can set the velocity to control an envelope amount. Or you could link the pitch of the notes to the cutoff of your filter to do the key following I talked about earlier. So the higher the notes, the more open the filter. Don't hesitate to try to control different parameters with the velocity, the gate or the pitch. This is an excellent way to make expressive patches. Or link several parameters to one knob and automate this knob in a rhythmic pattern. That's also an excellent way to morph your sound. And combined with envelopes and LFOs, it is a very powerful tool to have. So that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and I'll see you all next time.